Hey, what's going on? It's your boy BT, and I came here to talk some boxing with the thousands of True School Sports subscribers. Now, one, I'm, I'm in catch up, bro. As most of you may know, because I haven't just been, I've been a lazy bum the last couple weeks. So we're gonna stop being lazy bum, and we are going to catch up on all the fights that we missed, that the fights that I would have covered had I been active. So we're gonna start with Virgil Ortiz. You know, one of the hottest prospects in all of boxing. Um, I, just, I just got a chance to watch his most recent fight with Antonio Orozco, and it was a, it was a fantastic fight. But Virgil Ortiz, you know, they had the saying in Texas, because he's from Grand Prairie, Texas, you know, Dallas area. They had the saying in Texas, you know, they say, don't mess with Texas. Well, don't mess with Virgil Ortiz, because as, he, as he's proven sh so far in his career, 14 men have stepped in the ring, and all 14 of them have got stopped. You know, 14 to no, 14 knockouts, Virgil Ortiz is doing his damn thing. And look, I know a lot of times in boxing, when you get these undefeated, padded records... When you get these undefeated pad of records, you know, it's a lot of times it can be fluff, it can have no substance. But when we, when we look at Virgil Ortiz's record, you know, I, I, I see some names that are worthy of praise. You know, guys he stopped, you know, a guy like, um, you know, this fight before this one, uh, May 4th, he fought Mauricio Herrera, you know, the crafty, the, 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 the crafty veteran Mauricio Herrera, a guy that was, you know, challenging for world titles consistently, uh, fought the likes of Danny Garcia, you know, who, who we know have, has great punching power. Danny couldn't even hurt him. You know, and, and and Virgil, obviously, this is a Herrera that had been through wars, and you know he'd already lost to Frankie Gomez. You know, he he was not the same Herrera that fought Danny Garcia, but he's still Mauricio Herrera. He's still crafty. He's still not an easy guy to hit flush. And Virgil Ortiz just dissected him piece by piece, brick by brick, and got him out of there and folded him up like a blue steel chair. You know, so that was a great performance. You know, a couple fights before that, you know, he fought Roberto Ortiz. You know, another tough Mexican veteran. You know, stopped him. Fight before that, he fought Juan Carlos Salgado, former world champion. Obviously, he has seen his best days already. He's a faded fighter, but still a guy that can give you rounds, can 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 beat you if you're not on your p's and q's, as he showed a long long time ago with Jorge Linares. But uh, Virgil Ortiz stopped him, so he stopped some good fighters on the way to the Orozco fight. The Orozco fight though was going to be his toughest fight today because of the fact that Orozco, just from his reputation at 140. Um, you know, he had proven himself to be a tough contender. He gave Jose Ramirez a good fight when he was at 140, when he challenged for the world title. Um, for Orozco, too, this was his first fight at World Toy, moving up to 147. So for him, it was good because he had been killing himself to make that 140-pound limit for a couple of years. So now he was at 147. For, uh, yes, he's fighting a younger, fresher fighter, Virgil Ortiz. And I'm, th I'm, 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 I'm thinking that from his perspective, he's thinking Virgil Ortiz is a, gr a green, inexperienced fighter. And, um... You know, Orozco was the kind of fighter that Virgil Ortiz was, you know, not ready for this fight if he if he may, if if he was not able to land and uh, certain punches or wasn't sharp on the night. He this could have been a lot tougher, tougher fight for him. But um, you know, Virgil Ortiz just dissecting him piece by piece. You know, I uh, heard him early. You know, he heard him early in the first round. You know, first round I thought he 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 made a great statement. You know, um, Ortiz, you know, hurt Orozco early in the round in in, in that round. You know, with the left hook. Then the right hand, you know, he he even like towards the latter stages of that round, if you go back and watch it, there was a sequence where he's off, where he's punching off the ropes and even punching off the ropes, punching off the back foot, he still showed excellent power punching off the ropes, which not a lot of fighters can do. You know, I, I think a lot of fighters can punch off the ropes, but to punch effectively and and punch with bad intentions while off the ropes, you know, it's 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 one of those lost arts in boxing today. And uh, Virgil Virgil Ortiz displayed that excellent in an excellent fashion. Against Orozco in that first round, so it was a dominant start for him. You know, it definitely got his attention early. Um, he did show in the second and third round that he still does get hit fighting off those ropes. You know, um, you know, or or Orozco was, uh, t you know, taking advantage of him fighting off those ropes, uh, touching him to the body, sometimes with hooks. Um, you know, he was game. He he definitely showed he was game. But um, as the fight wore on, you saw Virgil Ortiz sh uh, show himself to be an extremely sharp fighter. Right in the pocket, you know, showing great composure, um, combination punching in the, inside the pocket. And, you know, when... It's funny about Virgil Ortiz because a, a lot of people are, are enamored by his fundamentals, which are fantastic. A lot of people are enamored by his punching power, which is fantastic. But I think his best quality is actually his composure. His ability to sit in the pocket and throw three, four, five, six punch combinations while staying on balance, while maintaining proper punching technique... It's it's like when I I mean when I watch Virgil Ortiz do that he looks to me when I watch him fight he look he he punch when he when he 
when he starts letting his hands go, he looks like a bigger version of Roman Chalk Tito Gonzalez. You know, he's on balance. He's throwing punches from different angles. And to me, it's very reminiscent of like a Roman Gonzalez type fighter. Because if you, if you guys remember Chalk Tito, when he was in his prime, he could throw five, six, seven, eight punch combinations and stay on balance and maintain proper technique. And like Virgil Ortiz has, has that same kind of quality to him. So, you know, um, you know, he showed it in the, in the middle rounds as the fight progressed. And then... Orozco uh, was doing a good job of, of pushing Virgil Ortiz back and putting him in those situations to put him on the ropes in those first four rounds. But ultimately, the way that, the way this fight ended was with a dominant six-round TKO. Virgil Ortiz with, with the Roman Gonzalez-like combination punching in that sixth round. And he becomes the first man to stop the very game, very tough and always respectable Antonio Orozco. So, you know, we look at Virgil Ortiz's last two fights. He stops Mauricio Herrera, a guy who had never been stopped, you know, in his whole career, in one round. Then he stops Antonio Orozco, a guy who's never been stopped in his entire career, in six rounds. You know, Virgil Ortiz is showing his love. He's showing his class. Fight by fight, he's showing just how good he is and just how good he can become. And, I, I mean, if anybody said to me right now, BT, Virgil Ortiz is the best prospect in all of boxing right now, I wouldn't even get mad at you because, you know, the more they step up, the better he performs. And, you know, I'm just really impressed with what I'm seeing from Virgil Ortiz, I think. Uh, he's he's doing some amazing things in his career, and I think you know I'll I'll take it a step further with him. I think with him, you know, he's a welterweight. I think he'll be a welterweight for quite for you know a couple more years. You know, Virgil Ortiz, I feel like he has the perfect path to a welterweight title. I'm gonna explain to you what I mean. Now it's a known fact that three of the four welterweight champions were PBC. The other one who's not is Terence Crawford. He's with Top Rank. Virgil Ortiz is aligned with Golden Boy. This is a good thing for him because he's not going to be pressured early on in his career to make the big fights um, because of the politics of boxing. He can literally sit there and he can develop and he can take the right fights and he can still work on his, on his skill set before he does challenge for a world title. You see what I'm saying? I don't think he's gonna, he's not going to be the kind of fighter that gets a world title uh, fight until he's like the mandatory challenger, which he isn't as of yet. So with that being said, you know he has. He's not going to get pressured by the fans to make the big fights early on in his career. He's he's going to get ample time to develop. He's already a pretty developed and well-polished fighter. You know, it seems like every fight Virgil Ortiz is fighting like a guy who's been a, a, a pro fighter for 15 years. You know, he, he's got he fights with that kind of poise. He fights with those kind of fundamentals, and he is to be respected. So, uh, to me, like his his path is set like to a welterweight title. He's not. He, he's politically aligned the right way, you know, with with, with Golden Boy. This one, one time I'll say that with, with Golden Boy, you know, uh, he can he can he can take you know uh, these. I don't want to say easier fights, but the but the learning fights, you know, against against solid guys, but guys who aren't the upper echelon fighters, and gradually build his way. He can take his time. He doesn't gotta rush his way to the top like a lot of fighters try to do, and then they lose, and they're never the same again. You know, and, and Golden Boy has already made their intentions clear. They're not gonna they're not gonna rush. Virgil Ortiz. Um, they're going to take the time with him. They're going to develop him. They're going to take the right fights at the right time. And, you know, it, it, just looking at how they're moving Virgil Ortiz. Um, and I, I'm someone that's, for me, as a, as, a, as a boxing fan and someone who covers boxing, I'm very fascinated by the, man, the management side of boxing, you know, um, as far as how uh, companies move fighters, you know, what, what fighters they put them in there, put, put, put their fighters in with as they're on their way towards a world championship, you know, and if you look at the guys that Virgil Ortiz has fought so far in his career, they all fit a certain type of bill, you know, um, come forward, um, faded uh, Mexican fighters, um, with the exception of Juan Carlos Salgado, you know, he's fought in his last five or six fights, you know, the, the same type of style. Now, I'm not, I'm not trying to hate on Virgil Ortiz, I'm, I'm just speaking the, I'm, I'm giving you guys what I'm seeing from the guys he's fought in his last five or six fights. I'm not, I'm not saying Virgil Ortiz can't handle guys that can move because um, I think he has the fundamentals. I think he has the skill set, the, the intelligence, the power punching to, to definitely break those guys down. But so far, they're, they're, they're only giving him certain kinds of fights, and that's by design. And, and, and the result of that is a sparkling, shiny 14-0, uh, 14K record, and he's looked at as one of the top prospects in boxing, as he should be. Because when you stop guys like Mauricio Herrera in one round and Antonio Orozco in six rounds, you you are worthy of you are worthy of praise. So, where does he go from here? I'm not entirely sure. I mean, I would like to see Virgil Ortiz. I mean, let, let, let's look at the world weights. You know, I, I would like to see Virgil Ortiz, uh, Virgil Ortiz, not Virgil Ortiz, in that record. I like to see Virgil Ortiz probably step up to that, like, uh, Kermit Laraga, you know, Omar Figueroa, Thomas DeLorme type, you know, uh, caliber fighter. I think he's ready for that. I think he'll do good with that. Um, you know, even if they want to put him in there with Adrian Granados, you know, Adrian Granados is a, is a good friend of mine. 
Shout out to Adrian Granados, but uh, I think he would do good with Adrian Granados type of fighter. Uh, Kavaluskis, if top rank wants to throw in there with Kavaluskis, I think that could be a good fight. You know, those are the kind of levels of fighting I think he's ready for next, and I think he'll definitely uh, do a good job against them, you know, because he's, he's a talented fighter. And I just think, like, with the way he's aligned, he doesn't got to – he's he's probably the, the wall to it that's sitting in the best position because he's not going to be rushed, and he can take his time, and he's already a good fighter, and he's getting good sparring in, in the gym. I mean, he, he's a guy that um, – I was reading an article that where uh, they said that Joel Diaz, his former trainer, Joel Diaz was talking about how he used to spar with Lucas, Lucas, Lucas Batista a couple years ago, and he was dropping Lucas Batista and sparring. So he's a talented fighter. He's definitely blue chip. I, I, I can't even call him a prospect. Prospect. I think he's well, right now. We're seeing George Ortiz make that step from blue chip prospect to um, just a um, a, a, a contender. You know, he's a fringe contender heading into that contender status right now, and it, it, it was just an excellent performance from him. Surgical clinical performance from. Virgil Ortiz, but let, let me know what you guys think. Well, what do you guys think about what? What did you guys think about Virgil Ortiz's performance against Antonio Orozco? Uh, what do you, who do you think he should fight next? You know, uh, wh how far do you think he can go in the welterweight division? I personally think he's sitting in the best position of any welterweight prospect in boxing right now because of the fact that uh, he's not with top rank or PBC, so he says he doesn't have to go through all that BS and he can just take his time. And when he's ready, he'll have he'll get the world title fight. You guys, let me know what you think in the comments down below. Make sure you take the time to subscribe. Like I say in every single one of these videos. You can love me or you can hate me, but I'm just a kid from Daniel. So until next time, take your guys.